TRW Royalist and Roundheads 2, Battle of Edge Hill still. It is uh, the 1200 hours turn. The uh, I started with the parliamentar parliamentarian movement. Um, mostly I just uh, pushed up the center to make contact across the, the center line here. Um, and I moved up here. Uh, just to review Ballard as an attack command, but uh, CS6 here has a, I think advance? No attack, so Meldrum has the advance. Yeah, Meldrum has the advance. Essex still has the attack. So most of the leaders here have an attack. Just Meldrum has the advance command. Um, um, after movement, I uh, started the parliamentarian combat phase, starting with the fire subphase with def defensive fire. And it's interesting because this part, maybe the center right here, there was firing here with nothing, no results at all. Then we got to here, fielding, basically, yeah, fielding. Um, just devastated C Essex here. Out of the four infantry units that SC Essex has here, um, routed three of them and caused a step loss to uh, the final one. So that was just a devastating counterattack there. And finally, not too surprisingly, the Royalist Dragoons on the far right, on their Royalist far right, um, finally eliminated the Parliamentarian Musketeer who was left there. So all three Parliamentarian Musketeers, they're over there, um, that start off on the Parliamentarian far left have been eliminated. And that's going to allow, probably allow these Dragoon units to come over here and wrap around the Parliamentarian left flank there. Um, so some things to say real quick, let's see how quickly I can say them. Watching these first, what, one, two, three, four, watching these first four and a half turns, some things become clear. Um, not necessarily set, but some impressions. One impression is the cavalry here. So all of Essex cavalry here and Rupert's cavalry here and Ramsey's cavalry here. The cavalry here, um, are really, they're not heavy at all in game terms. They're quite light, and really, in the grand scheme, the cavalry is really just for skirmishing. Uh, they have good mobility. Um, they do have, well, they have basically a nominal fire capability. Um, but they're mostly just, I mean, I'm sure there's a bit more use for them than I've come across again, playing again here. But um, now the infantry is coming into contact, uh, and these guys are devastating. So here's an example. This just just devastating blow here back. Put it in terms of the strengths that will be assessed if they are if they are all still routed, and that is a big if. But if they're routed. When we get around to the rally phase, that alone is, um, that's 32 strength points. Um, 10, 20, 32. I mean, that's just massive. And we're talking 12 strength point, 12 strength point, 8 strength point, 8 strength point infantry unit with fire capability. And the fire capability for infantry is not bad. We're talking normally with no modifiers and you can get modifiers but with no modifiers it's a it's a morale check on a five and a one step loss uh which means one step loss plus morale checks on a roll of six um that's not bad anyways just real quick i think uh the player should not be thrown off by the cavalry here the, these are not this is not heavy cavalry that's running down units and you know punching holes in lines or anything. 
Um, I just don't think that. Okay. Um, I think I finished all, I did finish all of the defensive fire. Now we're going to go to offensive fire. Um, uh, oh, and here's, here's another thing to note. This, these four Dragoon units on the far Parliamentarian right, they've really succeeded for four and a half turns to keep, <laughs> to hold the Royalist left in place, hold them at bay, allowing the Parliamentarian infantry now to get into the center and now, you know, hopefully, well, after they rally here, um, see what kind of damage they can do. Okay, so fire. Um, they're all going to fire here in the center. They're going to fire here. Balor's going to fire here. That should be pretty devastating. And and then the artillery there. So we'll do that. We'll, I'll come back if anything interesting, if I want to show anything interesting. So all sorts of different results you can get. Um, not really... Not only terribly interesting, but it's interesting with all of the... It's still... I will note still that with all of the infantry fire in the center here, the Royalists did not fail a single morale check. However, the Parliamentarian infantry in the center there, they did cause three step losses. Step loss here on the infantry, and here on this cavalry, and here on this cavalry. And so again, it's... It's a slow build, but I still think that things can cascade. Um, things do develop slowly, and that's this is something that I just like terribly much. Um, uh, but it can lead to unexpected uh, uh, cascading events. All right, so melee. There's definitely going to be melee. Both sides, I still think each side has the incentive to go all out on the attack. Um, okay, we'll see what we get here. So this is the end of the um, parliamentarian um, combat phase, end of the melee um, what, what can you say? All sorts of, not crazy, but all sorts of different things happen. Um, killed off another Royalist Cavalry. Um, routed this unit. I do think it's interesting that, uh, well, with this scale and scope, so... He advanced here, but I'm orienting him this way because he's off to the flank of this Royalist Cavalry's. So he basically doesn't have to worry about this one. And he's angled that way. I think with the scale of ground and time, okay. Um, otherwise, I would have thought, well, wait a minute. Shouldn't there be a rule that you have to orient your front towards the enemy that you're adjacent to when you advance? But I think, I think that that might be too lower of a scale than we're looking at here. Uh, here, the Royalist um, uh, Musketeers just withdrew before combat. Well, a no, actually, it's not withdraw before combat. They um, they withdrew. Um, what do you call it? I don't know what you want to call it, but they w they withdrew. Um, they withdrew before melee but not before combat. They withdrew before melee. Um, here... Well, there wasn't much change, if anything, here. Um, I think this is an example of where I had four infantry units here, a massive force ready to take on this one Royalist Cavalry here, and I think both of these units failed their morale, their morale test, their pre-melee morale check. So they just did nothing. These guys, I think, just got a morale check that the Byron Cavalry easily passed. Um, here, though, Ramsey's Cavalry routed um, Rupert's Cavalry there. Um, that was good. So he advanced and oriented himself this way. 
to the flank of uh, uh, Wales Wales cavalry unit there. Um, this guy was routed. Um, so some results here, some results there. But when you consider the melee all along the front here, it always comes down to, in my experience, unable to. This was the box cars that <laughs> Rupert's cavalry uh, rolled as their morale check, um, resulting in their rout. Um, I can never tell, never predict where things are going to happen. I think the overall is fairly stable, but where in particular things are going to happen, it's hard to tell. Okay, so uh, parliamentarian um, route phase, or rally phase, I should say. Um, yeah, so this is interesting. Um, uh, th this is interesting. Okay, so here, uh, Ramsey's cavalry, he's within command span of uh, his leader, and he's, and he's not adjacent to an enemy, so he gets to try to, ah, oh, and he's not do it, so he rolls 11, and it's plus one because he's routed for 12, well over his nine, so he routes three more hexes, so one, two, three, um, same thing over here, um, that's Ballard's infantry, their morale is only eight. There's Ballard there. Ballard has a command span of four, so he's eligible to try to uh, rally. Oh, okay. He rolls a three. Three plus one is four. He's good. He rallies. And then here, oh, this is going to be this is going to be important. Um, oh, very low morale of six. Wow, he does it. Five plus one is six. All right, all right. Um, again, over here, yeah, he does not get it. So one, two, three, and then here, morale is six, but he's but he's with the leader. The leader is not routed. I'm just putting the route marker on top so I can remember to try to rally. Ooh, he does not make it. This infantry is just brittle, brittle, brittle. So... One, two, three. So, um... That is all of the rallying for the parliamentarians. Now, the, uh... The royalists are going to check for... To see if they can roll on their victory table. What they need is a minimum of... Um... Let's see, uh, 18 losses. So they count the three uh, musketeers or dragoons. That's three, um, three plus 12 is 15. Yeah, plus eight. Okay. Um, 23, 23, 26. 26. I don't think there are any reduced units here. So 26. So that. The Royalists are allowed to roll for victory. So for Royalist victory, check the following table. I said 26. On a roll of 9 to 12, they will win. <laughs> what do you know? They roll a 9. Wow. So, yeah, it's over. And I like this. So, so blowing away the center there was really decisive. Plus a lucky roll. Um, blew back the center there. Um, that, that... See, I've never thought about this before, but that is not entirely out of your hands, right? I'm, I've restarted playing as aggressively as I can, just have everybody attack, see what happens, get practice with the rules, but actually this is maybe a reason why you don't want to do that. 
Um, maybe you do just want to go with a heavy attack with just one flank or, or just the center at a time. Just one part of the line in order to control this, this exact possibility. Um, now you can't you can't control the fact that if you issue it, that if you issue an attack command and it and it takes, then those units are, are heading towards the enemy, and if they're adjacent, they have to attack. But that's why maybe I mean I'm just giving attack orders to I'm giving out attack orders very liberally, and now I'm thinking maybe you you just don't want to do that. Um, Once those, yeah, but that's that's how it is. Um, I've always, you know, when I first figured this out, I was like, "Wow, uh, do I have this right?" But, um, but that's, I mean, I think I've got it right. And I, I again, at some point, I'm still not going to do it now. I'm going to talk about why I like this mechanic. I know the mechanic can be really um, unpopular with 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 some gamers but um each scenario list number of combat strength points with so I'm gonna do this again because this is this is so important three for the for the killed dragoons three fifteen yep yeah twenty three twenty six Okay, so that's right. Twenty six, nine to nine to twelve. Die roll needed for victory. Um, each scenario list number of combat string points aside may lose before the opponent begins checking for victory. Um, Yeah. See, I think instead of just getting frustrated at the design, I think player, if if one, I mean, I have read online, okay, so I'm not exactly making this up. I think I think uh, players should should pay attention to what decisions they can make. Um, what decisions are in their hands. Um. Now here the leader, you know, is is with the routed infantry. Um, but uh, I mean, what orders you give is completely in, under your what orders you want to give, what orders you decide to give, whether they're accepted is is a role. But uh, what orders you give, how you give those orders, and what sequence, and yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Royalist and Roundheads too. I like it. I like it. I like it. I like it. Um, I learned a lot about the cavalry. Um, I think the cavalry battles on the flanks. I don't know. I think that they're just going to happen. They're going to happen earlier. They're going to happen late. <laughs> um, but I do think that maybe it is. Don't go pell mill. And try to. Be aggressive with everybody across the the whole front at, at the same time. 